गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वरा गुरु देव परम ब्रह्मा तस्मय श्री गुरवे नम चिन्मय व्याप्यत्सलोक्यम सचराचरा तत्पदम दर्शित तस्म श्री गुरवे नम माता पिता बंधु सखा वेदे भूता प्रतिभा चोपशम या तस्म सत्यम So where are we in our text? We're on number 43, page 311. What page? 311. 311, number 43. Do you help us out please? Yeah. So kai do kai griya yogai भाव भाव भ्रम पद न संुभ्यति यो मुक्त महाभोक्ता स उच्यते हि इज कॉल्ड द ग्रेट एंजॉयर हु इज नॉट एजुटेटेड बाय पेन्स एक्सपीरियंस्ड बाय प्लेजर्स और सॉरोज बाय कनेक्शन्स विथ एक्शन्स और बाय द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस ऑफ एक्शन्स बाय द एक्झिस्टन्स or non existence of things and by those causing perplexity so here the import of the verbs is the one who's happy the cause of happiness is peace of mind the cause of peace of mind is supreme detachment from the world very very simple the master jesus said i am in the world but not of it and we again go back to this term ananda the three great words that are used to indicate the self sachidananda pure existence pure consciousness bliss absolute everybody always has it <clears throat> it is constant it cannot be gained achieved lost etc well i don't feel blissful jim i'm pretty miserable today what's this on on the business meaning i do not understand what on on day is i confuse it with the mind state of happiness so this is my way of approaching it for beginners we translate the word ananda as no sorrow reaches there pain gets to my body suffering gets to my mind doubt confusion get to my intellect but nothing touches me well then why do we call it bliss because we come to understand 
What is it that makes the mind suffer? What is it that gives the mind peace? The self has no problems. My problems have nothing to do with the self in the end. My suffering occurs to my mind. And my liberation occurs to my mind. So what the yogi learns when the mind covered by ignorance thinks I'm a person, I'm bereft of happiness and people, places, things and conditions will give me that. I am under the influence of the KKK. We covered this in Gita last night. Not the Ku Klux Klan. Karma, karma, cruel love. Karma, craving. I want this. I need this in order to be happy which impels me into obligatory action, karma. And because the world is constantly changing and because my mind is constantly changing, the end result is I'm pissed off. Anger is thwarted desire, unmet expectation. What it is. And then there's fear. What is the cause of fear? I'm not going to be okay. I'm going to not get what I want. I'm going to lose what I have. All of that is based on Jiva Bhavana. I think I understand. So when I have this supreme Vyaradya, I just watch. A funny farm go by. Don't get involved with it. Then I have peace. And when I have peace, then I have happiness. Any thoughts on this? The Bhogi practices Bhoga, meaning they approach the world from this paradigm. Getting what I want will make me happy. Therefore, I need to satisfy as many desires as possible. The end result is what? Four desires. It's like trying to quench fire by pouring gasoline on it. But the yogi also wants happiness. So the yogi has a different paradigm. I engage in a way of life which has as its goal the reduction of the number of desires in a day. And I'm left with all this space, all this freedom. The imperious tyrant of 
longing is gone. Any thoughts on this? Now, we get no reinforcement for this way of life out there in the world. The world gives us 180 degrees, exact opposite. The one with the most toys wins. More, better, different. Cash and prizes. But just stop and look at these people. Then you just look at a photo of someone like Ramana Maharshi. You tell me who has what you want. Next verse. Idam bhojam abhojam chet yevam tyatva vikalpanam gata bhilasham yobhum ke mahabhokta sa uchyate. This is to be enjoyed and this is not to be enjoyed. Having given up doubt or option in such manner, she who enjoys free from desire is called the great enjoyer. Yes. The Mahabhokta. Yeah. So, when things come to you, you can enjoy. What is the difference between the person in ignorance and the yogi? The person in ignorance, object of desire comes. Ooh, that's really cool. When desire and object of desire become one, and the mind says, that's where the pleasure is. Let me do it again. The yogi. Auspicious condition comes. Desire and object of desire become one. Oh. Man, did that stop my mind. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. She knows that it's a taste of the self. So Swamiji would use the language there is a mediated experience of my own self-nature. The person of knowledge can drop it all and have that non-mediated experience of the self. This Sunday, we'll probably get that wonderful verse Desires enter the bosom of the person of steady wisdom, the way rivers enter the ocean. The ocean doesn't go on. I like to think it's like a thimble full of water added to the infinite ocean. Is there? But it's so little. But if we're in spiritual poverty, if my underlying mind state is restless, discontent, agitated, then the little bit of joy I get from the world, oh, that's the only relief I get. That's a sad way to be. Sad way. Next verse. Apadam sampadam moham anandam aparam param yobhungte samaya buddhya mahabhokta sa uchite. He is called the great enjoyer who enjoys or experiences with an 
equable mind, misfortunes, prosperity, delusions or wonder, happiness, the inferior and the superior. So one of the things the yogi finds is so much of our suffering is the resistance to what is. If we can just be with what is right now. I was talking with a student and one of the things he struggles with, he's a young guy, he's in his 20s, he is lust and he's lonely. He wants a significant other and he's on the apps that sort of stuff. And he went and did a four day retreat. And he was amazed. First of all, part of it was his phone wasn't available. And he could go walking. And he was like, quiet. And experiencing nature. And his mind wasn't in the past or projecting in the future. He was just in the now. And there was such peace. Such peace. If you're sick, lie down. It only becomes suffering. I shouldn't be sick. I should be at work. I've got so much to do. Or, oh, I'm wondering if I'm going to die. This is stuff we had. Even misfortune. Stock market goes down, stock market goes down. Lay off from work, lay off from work. Any thoughts on this? doesn't mean to avoid the responsibilities of the world. Be solution-oriented, but be at peace. It's all gonna work out. And then you die. <laughs> and even that is completely safe. Any thoughts? Next one. Dharma dharma sukham dukham tatha marana janmani dhyā yena parityakta mahatyāgi sauchate He is said to be the great renouncer by whom righteousness and unrighteousness, pleasure and pain, and also death and birth have been given up by the mind or intellect. There's a note. Go ahead. The yogin is not affected by the pairs of opposites being ever established in their own nature that is pure consciousness. So the idea here is what is it that we are to renounce? The scriptures say retire to a solitary place renounce your activities in the world, renounce your unnecessary use of speech, renounce your fascination for this. We have all these things we're supposed to renounce. 
And we go through that until we've attained to yoga rudha. This is a term we get in Gita. Arudha is a riding term. Yoga rudha means to mount the steed of the mind. This incredibly powerful stallion, but you're in control of it. What does it mean? We go through the discipline where we're willing to do anything for the rest of eternity. And we're willing to do without anything for the rest of eternity. Now, renounce even that. What should you do? What should you not do? I like to say, put the robot on automatic pilot. Let it fulfill its product in the world. You have no concern. And what will happen to the body? It will get its allotted dose of praise and censure, success and failure, joys and sorrows in the world and sense. You are a Pyagi, a Mahapyagi, great abandoner. You know what's up? It's not a big deal. Now, here's a great key. Most of us are more than willing to renounce our suffering. Oh, I lost so and so. Can't seem to let go. Why is that difficult? Who has the answer? Where did I make the attachment? on the pleasure side. When good things happen, do we become attached? Because if we do, when, not if, when it changes, Don't believe me. Look to your direct experience. Any thoughts on this? Does it mean not to appreciate the joys of life? Do so. But I like to use the example, think of it like a sunset. Nobody gets attached to a sunset. We just enjoy it and it's gone. It's a gorgeous day today. Guess what's going to happen tomorrow? It's going to rain. Attachment does no work. So we can enjoy and not be attached. You know who's naturally really good at this, the dying. The dying have an incredible capacity to cherish the now. With a clear understanding, this may be the last time I see so-and-so. This may be the last piece of chocolate I'll be able to eat. 
This may be the last time I hear this piece of music. This may be the last time I can go outside in the sun. You ever walk that journey with a friend who's in the dying process? They cherish, they enjoy, but they're naturally misfits. Dying is pronunciation at gunpoint. Get notes that way too. So our job is to learn to live like that before the very end of life. So there's great freedom there. Now, some people as they approach their last time, uh, hours or last days, they are just gripping on to the past like nobody's business. For them, it's frightening and terrifying and very painful. Everybody is able to let go. Next one. Sarvicha sakala shankaha, sarveha sarva nishchayaha, diyayena parityakta, mahatyagi sa uchate. He is declared as a great, great renuncer, a renouncer by whom all des desires, all doubts, all efforts motivated by the desire for fruits and all determinations or intentions are abandoned by the mind. Yeah. So the great abandoner has given up all egocentric undertakings. I'll be happy when it'll be better. If. Does this mean we don't have ambition in our work? Of course you can have ambition in your work. But let go of the result because you never know. Never know how it's going to turn out. Why am I struggling at job and stuff like that? Force of the past maturing, that's it. What should I focus on? Why don't you try being of service? In our five elements of karma yoga, act according to your swadharma in the yajna spirit. Fruits belong to the Lord. Success and failure, gain and loss, honor and dishonor, all those blunt ones, those pairs of opposites. Don't have concern. Any thoughts on this? Now, many of you have heard me say, well, I wouldn't do anything if that's what, what I, I, I practice, Jim. So you will. I tell people, God has led me through life by means of my wallet. I'm not a trust fund kid. Nor was it my karma to go be a swami. So the bottom line is got to pay the rent got to do something. Does it matter in the end? No. Uh, 
That's part of our karma. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Yavati Vishya Kalana Sakaleyam Vilokyate Sayena Sushtusan Sushtusan Yakta Mahatyagi Sauchite As long as there is the grasping or comprehension of the seen or the visible universe, all this is perceived. By whom that is truly renounced, he is said to be the great renouncer. There's a note. Go on. The process of knowing or perceiving presuppo presupposes the existence of the knower and the known. This division is the basis of ideation. When this is dissolved, what exists is the unconditioned or undifferentiated consciousness, which is chit or some with pure intelligence or consciousness. And so there's two ways to look at this verse. What the uh, commentator is talking about is nirvikalpa samadhi when the individual knower and the phenomenal world are no longer available but there's a state beyond nirvikalpa what we call sahaja samadhi where even though the phenomenal world is perceived through the eye of wisdom. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma is all verily God. Don't worry. So we don't need to be in some super withdrawn mind state. Nirvikalpa is a value, it absolutely proves to the mind the unreality of the individual sense of self and the world. But as long as when you're not in meditation, the world is still giving you grief, means you have yet to see the self in and through. All this is Maya. In the end, it's all this. It only becomes problematic when I'm superimposed. My ideas. Any thoughts on this? Next one. Ityaktam deva devena ringishaya puranadhya etam drishtim avashtabhya tishtarama gatajvaraha Sinless one, thus was declared formally by the God of Gods to Br Bringesha. Brahma, resting upon or with the help of this perception or knowledge, remained free from distress. Yes. So again, in these final chapters, we're getting summation verses. Remembering what it is to be a supreme enjoyer, what it is to be a supreme renouncer of No personal sense of self is real. This world is pratibimba. It's just a reflection in consciousness. Amasatyam jalanit. Don't worry. Let it go. Next one. 
इति श्री वशिष्ठ संग्रहे चिन्मात्र स्थिति ही नाम एको न Thus ends the 29th chapter titled Living with the Fullness of Consciousness in the Abridgment of Your Old System. It's a short chapter. Next one. How many? We almost to the end? Two more? Uh, three more. Okay. Trinshaha Sargaha, chapter 30. Ikshvaku Pakhyanam, the story of Ikshvaku. Section 1. Sansara Karanam, the cause of worldly existence. Vashishta Uvacha, Galite Va, Galat Drupe, Chitte Hankara Namani, Kopa Tanavam Ayati, Moho Mandhyam Hikachati, Kamopi Klantatam Yati, Lobhakwapi Palayate, Na Dukhani Vilampanti, Na Valgandi Sukhani Cha, Sarvatra Samato Deti, Tridi Shaitya Pradayani. Vashishta said, When the mind with the appellation of ego has vanished or its form is vanishing, anger attains to thinness, delusion surely suffers feebleness, even desire reaches the state of exhaustion, greed runs away somewhere, sorrows do not stain and pleasures do not dance. Equably, which produce, which so equability, which produces coolness in the heart, rises everywhere. Yes. So the root of all the problems is the I thought. Ahankriti. Asmita. Jiva Bhavana. Has many different ways. When I think I'm a person. When I think I'm a person, the phenomenal world and that I thought, meaning by the phenomenal world, but it's separate from me, joy giving and misery producing, they arise together. Third element, Jonesy, part of it. Root of the mind is Jiva Baba. I think I'm a person. Me in trouble. How do I get out of it? This feeling that I'm a person is not real. It's fake news. It's a shadow self. The way we get out of it, if you inquire, go looking for this apparent person. Just like when you shine a light upon a shadow, where does it go? There was nothing there. What was there was the absence of light. So when I introvert the attentive faculty and go looking for Jim or Daniel or somebody, it falls. What's there? Chidahana. I am of the form of this consciousness. Maham Pravasmi. Next verse. 
भवताम आदि पुरुष इक्ष्वाको नाम भूपति एकदा पृष्टवान नत्वा ब्रह्मलोका गतम मनु अस्य दृश्य प्रपंचस्य को हेतु सैत स्वयं once your first ancestor the king named ishvaku himself asked manu who had arrived from the world of brahma the creator god thus after saluting him what can be the cause of this visible universe note ishvaku according to the puranas was the first of the kings of the solar race and a son of veshwa veshwa vastu man uh, sorry veshwa swata manu was supposed to have been born from the sun and regarded as the progenitor of the present race of living beings okay going manurvacha yat idam drishyate kinchit tat nasti nripa kinchana marusthale yatha vari kheva gandhar vapattanam manusya king this visible universe whatsoever is seen that does not exist even a little just as water in a sandy desert or the city of celestial beings imagined in the sky so what is manu say this world is not created it is not solid and real and separate from me there are not individual beings which are lovable and hateable the objects are not joy giving and misery producing they are seen but not real they are seen like the mirage waters in the desert when i'm in ignorance my senses report water and my knowledge is water false knowledge through investigation my senses continue to report to me what looks like water but my knowledge is heat waves off the sand i look up and i see the puffy clouds it looks like there's a castle in the sky i think it's even more cool when you're in an airplane and you're above the clouds and you look down and they're all big and fluffy and as the plane descends oh my god they're going to smash into the cotton and you just keep descending and all of a sudden you're inside the cloud marvel to me every time i'm in it airplane seen but not real what is the root of my problem with this world i take it as real it's a real experience but it's not substantively comes about like a dream the clearest way to understand it is to compare the world a fancy of a visualization with the world of dream dreamt i was in the house i grew up in on pine tree lane there was the library with all my dad's books seeing seemed so real to the dreamer when i woke up gone 
I'll close my eyes. I can still see that big, thick book with the black leather binding. And I know it's just a visual image. What's the difference? The dream state is preceded by a Varana Shakti. Veiling power, the non apprehension of myself as the waker. Then, when the Vichetha Shakti takes place, I take it as real. So, also for the person in spiritual ignorance. First is the Avarana Shakti, the non apprehension of myself as Brahman. And when the mind creates asmita, jiva bhavana, ankriti, and a phenomenal way, I think it's real. Any thoughts on this? Not making this up. What the scriptures say. Next one. Mana Shashtain Driyati Tam Yatuno Drishyate Koche Avinasham Tadastiha Tatsat Atmeti Katyatat. But that is indestructible thing which is beyond the mind and the five senses, and is not seen in some place, exists here. That reality or existence absolute is declared as the self. Yes. So, Koham, who am I? I'm not the body, not the prana, not the mind, not the intellect, not even the darkness of deep sleep. I am that consciousness. I am Atma Brahma. What is this world? This world is nothing but consciousness appearing as name and form. Brahma Satyam Jadamitya. It looks like stuff, but what it is is Brahma. What's the nature of Brahman? Kutusta, immovable, vijnanam, a homogeneous mass of pure consciousness. This world appears in it, like Pratibimba, the images on a mirror or like the images in the crystal wall, seen. Don't you worry. Next one. Yam tu sarva drishtadhyā Rajan Sarga Parampara Tasmin Naiva Mahadarshe Pratibimba Mupagata King, the succession of creation abounding in all visible objects has attained reflection only in that great mirror of existence or the self. Well, he read my mind. So everything appears in consciousness like the reflections appear in the mirror. If I go into the bathroom, I see my face in the mirror. Daniel goes into the bathroom, he sees his face in the mirror. 
does the mirror undergo any change? No. It is theta still standing. But it's its nature to have reflections in it. This is no different. This is no different. What makes it seem so solid and real and joy giving and misery producing? Simply firm conviction in the mind from beginningless time. Doubt that perception. Entertain the possibility that the scriptures are correct. Start letting go of our investment. Watch the world. Thin out. Still pretty to look at, but it's substantial. Next one. Sankal poin, Mukhatam yata, Jin matra san vidho yada, Tada jivatvam. Ayanti Yathahyapa Tarangatam. When the reflected intelligences, which are only pure consciousness, are intent on or on the point of willing or ideation, then they attain to the state of individual souls or individualized consciousness, just as water assumes the state of waves. Yes. So this feeling that I am a person, this experience of being an individual comes about by means of sankalpa. In the end, we can't even discern is it the Lord's sankalpa or my sankalpa? Doesn't matter. But not only is my experience of individuality, nothing but a firm conviction in my mind, a sankalpa. But the world I see, certainly my interpretation of it, is my sankalpa. Remove all sankalpa. See the world as it is. Uh huh. So understand if I'm seeing stuff, I'm seeing mental projection. In the end, don't worry about my ideas or the Lord's ideas or group my. Give up concern for it. Again, one of my favorite mantras, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma, it comes from Chandogya. All this is barely gone. Don't worry about it. Three questions that we're going over that the entire text teaches. 
simply these three questions. Who am I? What is this world? How has it come about? Who am I? Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. What is this world? It too is nothing but Brahman. How has it come about? By means of imagination, Sankalpa. Nothing is real, manifested, or created. It's the essence of the teaching of Yoga Vasishna. Next verse. Sukha dukha dasha moho manasye vasvinam natvani na shastrai guru na vapi drishyate parameshwaraha drishyate swatmanai vatma svaya sattvasthaya dhita. The state of happiness or sorrow and delusion exists only in the mind, not in the self. The Supreme Lord is perceived neither through scriptures nor even through the scriptural preceptor, sorry, spiritual preceptor. He, the self, is perceived only by oneself through one's own intellect established in sattva or purity, knowledge, and harmony. So we have indirect knowledge, which can be of value gained through the scripture gained through the teaching of the Guru. Paroksha Jnana, indirect knowledge. The direct experience of Paroksha Jnana. Each one of us must come to experience for him or herself. How? using the hypotheses put forward in the scriptures, the suggestions from the scriptures and the teacher. What do we do? Various practices. We endeavor to have Tanu Manasa, dimness of mind. A softer mind, a purer mind, Vishuddha Chitta. Doesn't mean a goody goody mind, it means pure thoughts. And in a mind made very quiet, with the attentive faculty turned within. See if you can notice what is my essential nature. And again, we have two kinds of knowledge. The first knowledge we've always had, the self-evidence of the self. You do not see, hear, taste, touch, or smell, or know, or think yourself. Yet you are. How do you know you are? I don't know, I just do. That's right. Self is self-evident, self-shining, self-luminous, self-effulgent. But the great cosmic joke is everybody already has that. The most miserable of creatures does not lack the direct experience of the self. Do you exist? Oh, I exist. What's your existence? Misery. Do you know you're miserable? Oh, do I know I'm miserable? Give me money. A person knows I am. I shine. What else do they know? I have a miserable life. I am my body, which is riddled with sores. 
I live under a bridge, which is a miserable existence. Is that real? Yes, it's very, very real. All of that is in the mind. So the yogi, through various practices, attains a sattva. And in that sattva mind, with the attentive faculty introverted, practicing atma vichara, inquiry, investigation into the nature of the self. What is the subtle intellect at the end? Oh, there's nothing there. It's like space. I thought I was a person and it's gone. This is the pratyabhya, the recognition that takes place in the subtle intellect that is transformative, not to the self, but to the mind. Makes all the difference in the world. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Pehu ham itiya buddhi sa sansara nibandhini na kada chetiyam buddhi adeya hi mumukshubihi. The idea, I am the body, is one that binds the person to worldly existence. This idea should never indeed be taken or resorted to by seekers after liberation. So, what is my bondage? My bondage is nothing more than the deeply rooted conviction in my mind. And I'm bound. Meaning, I am my body, or my body plus the personality. I think I'm a transmigrating soul. That's still a body. As long as I think that's what I am, I'm going to be caught up in samsara, the karma chakra. I'll be happy when it'll be better if more better different. No escape. What is liberation? Nothing more than the deeply rooted conviction based on direct experience. Not that I'm an enlightened person. Not that my ego has become being. I never was a person. It was just this weird idea that my mind had. I'm that grounded being, that chidakasha, that I've always been. Any thoughts on this? Next one. How many more in this uh, section? Seven more. We may or may not finish them. Sunni Vesha Shavai Chitram Chitrayam Yatha Himno Gadadita. Atmana tad, tadarupa tathaiva jagadatita 
as the state of a bracelet and, and the like assumed by gold is due to the combination of the diversity or strangeness of the portion, just so the state of the world and the like assumed by the self is of the same unreal nature. So the material cause of various ornaments is simply them taking name and form. But the material, the gold, does not undergo a change. So also, the phenomenal world, the names and forms change shape. But the material out of which they're made is always consciousness and consciousness alone. Listen carefully. The consciousness never undergoes a real change. <coughs> we have these ideas like the waves in the ocean. The surface of the ocean actually undergoes a change. Gold ornaments. The gold actually undergoes a shape change. Consciousness does not undergo a change for the world to appear. Vinyaragana, Putusta, a homogenous mass of consciousness. It's ab Absolutely still. Next one. Kucha kotara san suktam Vismritya janani sutam Yatha roditi putrartham Tathat martham ayam janaha as a mother forgetting the child that is sleeping well on her bosom weeps for the child that is in search of the child, so does this person for the sake of the self. Note, the Atman or the self is the nearest to a person, nay, it is their own essential nature. Forgetting it is likened to the mother forgetting a child on her bosom. So it's closer than the closest. It's closer than a child on a mother's bosom. What you're looking for, I want money, I want a partner, I want prestige, I want a title. What I'm looking for, I'm looking with. What I really want is the self. Mind's capacity. Go of the world. Come home. Rather than my essential nature. All right, we'll quit here. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yonamaha